taken. Um, so today, hmm, ah, there we go. The slides are operating properly. Uh, our focus for today is the Coast Connect vision and to properly contextualize that, we'll go through a little bit of background and history. We'll talk about the current plan. We'll talk about the choice that's before us. We'll talk a little bit about the state rail plan, although that will be a subject for another work Friday. We'll talk about the Coast Connect vision itself. And we will also talk about actions you can take. And lastly, we'll go with some questions and comments. So first of all, where is the rail corridor? Most people are, think they know where it is, um, or some people don't know, have any idea. Um, this slide is from the a study that was completed by the Regional Transportation Commission, the RTC, and it was the Unified Corridor Investment Study. So it, it shows the three main transportation corridors. Most everyone is familiar with Highway 1. Highway 1 is the dark gray line in the picture. Uh, the second corridor that was studied is the SoCal Drive Freedom Boulevard corridor, which connects Santa Cruz to Watsonville. Uh, many people drive that. And the a cyan line uh, in the illustration is the rail corridor. And it stretches, as you can see, from Davenport up in the north all along the coast and ends up uh, passing through Watsonville and across the Pajaro River into the, to the Watsonville Junction, which is actually located in Watsonville where it connects uh, to the state rail plan, state rail network. So about 150 years ago, the rail line was built. Um, it was built to move people and goods along the coast from the Watsonville Junction on up to Davenport. Uh, as a result of the rail line being constructed, lots of homes and businesses were built alongside the tracks. And that's why today, there are 44 schools and 92 parks and more than half the county's population, which is situated within one mile of the rail corridor. So let's fast forward 150 years and our major transportation corridor has become Highway 1. Uh, this is a uh, typical peak commute hour uh, scene on Highway 1. Um, Many people in our county are stuck in this. It seems to go on almost all day. And we have become a car-centric culture. And so as a result of that, this is, this is what we, we live with. Uh, that's just getting worse. Uh, global warming is also getting worse. On the left is a, is a chart illustrating the difference from the average temperatures between 1950 and 1980, that's the thin gray line kind of in the middle of that graph. And as you can see, and as everyone knows, temperatures are climbing. We've climbed about one degree centigrade uh, since the turn of the century, since, well, since the 80s. That's almost two degrees Fahrenheit. And um, one of the impacts of global warming is the fires in the West Coast. This graph on the right is one that was, um, I had gotten from Cal Fire about a month ago, back in September. And at that time, two and a half million acres of California had burned, uh, more acres than any other year in recorded history. And we're now over four, and as everyone knows, the fires are still burning. So we have some problems to solve, but the good news is there's a plan. And this is a picture of the cover of the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail Network Master Plan, which is a long title for what everyone commonly refers to as the Rail Trail Plan. This plan was uh, adopted after years of public hearings and study and workshops back in 2013. And it basically illustrates the building a trail alongside the rail from Davenport to Watsonville. So what does that look like? It's basically a multimodal transportation corridor. Multimodal meaning more than one mode. And as you can see, the, the vision is for bikes and pedestrians to be on some kind of a 
paved path alongside a uh, passenger rail of some kind when it, when it arrives in the future. There are places where the rail corridor is adjacent to existing streets and places where it's adjacent to existing homes. And so this illustration is intended to sort of capture the, uh, all the possibilities. But, but the main thing is a rail trail alongside the rail. So what's the status on that plan? Um, as most plans go, um, things start and stop and they are um, passed and then challenged. And um, as a result of Measure D, which passed in 2016, the RTC wanted, the Regional Transportation Commission wanted to confirm that the rail with trail is the, is the plan, is the direction they wanna go. And after a multi-year, almost million dollar study, the RTC last year in 2019 confirmed that the county will go forward with the trail, building the trail for the approved master plan. They also agreed that they would keep the rail in place for some type of high capacity public transit. And they agreed that they would complete an alternatives analysis to determine what is the best type of high capacity public transit to put in the rail corridor. That decision uh, was made uh, last year, it was made unanimously. Since that decision has been made, the trail continues to be built. This is an image of the very first segment of the rail trail that was completed last year. It's the new bridge over the San Lorenzo River alongside the existing railroad tracks uh, near the boardwalk. Here's uh, very, very useful, everybody loves it. Um, and that's the very first segment of the rail trail, which is now under construction. Soon, the west side Santa Cruz Trail, the next segment to be open, will uh, open uh, probably any day, literally any day, sometime between now and December 1st, uh, that trail will be open. It'll be striped, the fence will be done, everything will be paved, and you'll be able to use it. Uh, so many people are excited about this uh, opening. Um, we hear from people almost every day. When will it be open? When will it be open? Soon, very soon. The next segment after that that will be open will be the Watsonville Trail. Uh, that project has uh, broken ground. They've um, under, they're underway and they anticipate being open sometime next spring or possibly early summer. Last month in September, the Regional Transportation Commission funded 18 miles of the Coastal Rail Trail uh, with Measure D funds. So they've allocated funds to 18 miles of Measure D. It doesn't mean they've authorized construction of 18 miles. It means they've authorized money to be spent on 18 miles of the rail trail. And you can see this is uh, from that presentation, uh, the segments that are next in line, uh, heading out to Davenport. Very, everyone's very excited about that. Um, then um, Santa Cruz, to 17th Avenue, 17th Avenue State Park, State Park to Rio de Mar Boulevard. Those are kind of all in the pipeline beginning design, probably the beginning of next year. So it's exciting to see this progress and uh, um, most people think that the trail will be completed by 2030. With regards to the high capacity public transit piece, the choice that's before us, the Regional Transportation Commission, RTC, has launched a transit corridor alternatives analysis. It is nearly complete. There's one more phase, it's a three phase uh, effort. Uh, we're in the final phase and there'll probably be an open house around the final phase of this uh, transit corridor alternatives analysis next month. Um, we don't know the details yet, but we think it's imminent. And so we'll uh, certainly keep you posted about that. So what, what options did they consider under the transit corridor alternatives? They considered 18 different options. Everything from the Tesla Hyperloop, the illustration on the right, to gondolas uh, suspended overhead. And uh, of course, everything in between those two, um, personal rapid transit, uh, variety of buses and trains and all those kinds of things. They've narrowed those choices down after considering all 18, they narrowed it down to basically 
four options. Two of the options are rail options. This picture illustrates the two finalists here. On the left is the light rail system. Um, it would run on tracks. It's lighter and not compatible with freight rail. Probably the only big difference, but uh, very light, uh, very quiet. And on the right is commuter rail. Commuter rail is a heavier vehicle. It's compatible with freight rail. So down in Watsonville, where the freight trains continue to run uh, on the tracks uh, and down to Monterey, where the line is shared with uh, Union Pacific, these types of rail vehicles would be compatible. A little faster, a little more heavier, a little more expensive. Um, but either one of these, that's uh, either one of these rail options would be uh, electric. Um, so they'd be uh, using carbon free electricity generated by our own a community power project. The other two finalists are bus options. On the left is a uh, what's called the bus rapid transit. It's basically a metro bus that would run at least in part of the corridor. We'll talk more about that later. On the right is an autonomous road train. This is a, um, there's one, exactly one of these in the world. It uh, runs in China on an 11 mile loop. And it's an autonomous vehicle and basically follows a painted line on pavement. So these are the, the bus options being considered for high capacity public transit. When we compare those finalists, um, this is the chart we created from information given by the RTC at, at their uh, May uh, open house. Uh, this is the RTC's evaluation. And you can see that the rail options check a lot of boxes and the bus options check a few options, check a few of the boxes. So for all of these reasons, we think the rail is a superior option to a bus in the rail corridor. So uh, I told you we'd revisit the bus, uh, the bus rapid transit plan. This is an illustration of the route that that bus rapid transit uh, would use. On the left side of the screen is, I know it's hard to read this map, it's you know very small scale, but on the left side is natural bridges. Uh, the west side is Santa Cruz. And on the right side, the bus use of the corridor would end at State Park Drive. That's about eight, a little over eight miles. The rest of the uh, way to Watsonville, or from Watsonville, the buses would run on the freeway, be, be part of the traffic. Um, and even in this eight and a half mile stretch, only two and a half miles of this is two way bus traffic on the corridor. That's represented by the orange line. All the six miles or so of uh, blue and green line here are places where the buses would run in one direction on the rail corridor and in the other direction would run on surface streets nearby. And the Siam uh, sections are where the bus would be operating in two directions on the rail corridor, but only one direction at a time. So it would be similar to maneuvering around a storm damaged road where it's restricted to one lane, but still carrying two way traffic. So the buses would come if the light was green, they would go, or if not, they would wait for the buses to clear that one way bridge basically. Um, you can see that that's problematic just by looking at it. And so um, we, we want to uh, explain some of that. We'll explain some of the difference between bus and train, bus and rail. Um, rail is much faster and more reliable. According to the Unified Corridor Study, which was completed last year, rail transit would take about 41 minutes from Watsonville to Santa Cruz during the commute hour. Uh, buses would take about 63 minutes. So pretty big difference, almost 22 minutes of travel time better. Um, for, for those reasons, faster and more reliable, uh, as well as other reasons, uh, the Unified Quarter Study also predicted that the rail transit ridership would be about 75% higher than the bus transit on the corridor. Um, the prediction was for 7,000 users a day um, and 4,000 on bus. So quite a bit, quite a bit of difference. And uh, even more importantly, putting rail on the corridor would double the use of public transit countywide. It's, it's just so much faster and more reliable that uh, with the feeder buses feeding the, the uh, transit line, rail transit line, the 
Unified Corridor Study predicted that the total use of public transit would double. It's so pretty phenomenal from 5 million users a year to 10 million users a year. Rail is very friendly to cyclists. Basically, you can roll on the bus, I mean, roll on the train. Um, your bike can be stored on the vehicle as opposed to buses, which would probably have racks on the front or back and or back. Um, that roll on, roll off feature is, uh, means that rail is friendly to everyone. Uh, people that might be in a, a wheelchair or moms with strollers, dads with strollers. Um, the rail is just a very friendly way to get around. Rail is also very friendly to the planet. Uh, the difference between passenger rail and bus on the corridor is about 10 metric tons of CO2 per day. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you add that up over the course of a year, that's the equivalent of planting 61,000 trees every single year, one inch diameter trees every year, and growing them for 10 years. And that's every year, year after year. Uh, we think that's a, basically a, a forest of carbon scrubbers and uh, really is a huge advantage of rail over bus. Rail is also friendly to the economy. The capital costs for implementing uh, rail service on the corridor is about 30% less per passenger. It also costs about 14% less to operate per passenger mile. So we're pretty bullish on, on rail. There's also funding for rail. Um, the 2018 state rail plan uh, includes substantial amounts of money for uh, rail in the Central Coast, one of which is regional rail service connecting Santa Cruz to the state rail network. Um, to give you an example of how much funding is available, the Transit Agency of Monterey County has, there are several years ahead of us in terms of implementing uh, rail in the Monterey County. Um, they've developed a kickstart passenger rail service pro, uh, uh, project that was funded with only 3.3% 3 3 local match required. So when you think about um, a $325 million passenger rail service, which is what the Unified Corridor Study estimated uh, rail service would be between Santa Cruz and Watsonville, uh, if we're only required to come up with 3.3%, that's about $11 million. So uh, that's uh, rail just represents a, a heck of a deal. Rail can also be implemented very quickly. The tracks are there. They would need to be upgraded um, to run passenger rail, uh, but upgrading uh, tracks is about the same as replacing a roof on your house. It's done all the time. It's a routine maintenance and can be done very quickly. Uh, implementing rail transit also prevents uh, any sort of uh, right of way easement litigation. Um, a number of parcels along the corridor have reversion rights, you know, so the property was sold or easements were granted that as long as the rails are in place, you can continue using the, the uh, rail corridor, but once the rails are pulled, then you, uh, you have a, a, a litigation to preserve that corridor. So continuing to use it avoids all of that. And you should know that support for rail transit is growing. Uh, back in June, the Watsonville City Council unanimously passed a resolu resolution of support for passenger rail transit between Watsonville and Santa Cruz. Both the Elderly and Disabled Technical Advisory Committee and the Bicycle Advisory Committee uh, to the Regional Transportation Commission both uh, passed motions of support for passenger rail transit. The Sierra Club, no surprise, has uh, supported, come out in support of passenger rail transit. Bike Santa Cruz County, the countywide uh, bicycle association has come out uh, strongly in favor of passenger rail transit and Regeneracion Pajaro Valley, uh, a group, uh, environmental group in South County, um, particularly focused on farm workers and global warming has also come out in with strong support. But you need to remember uh, that rail is bigger. It's much bigger. So the, when we talk about the state plan and the and the, the broader uh, vision for rail in the, in the state of California. Um, it's, it's, rail's big, it's coming. And this illustration is from the Transit Agency of Monterey County. This is their around the Bay rail network diagram. And basically they're envisioning around the Bay rail transit connecting Santa Cruz to Monterey. So you could travel by rail. 
instead of uh, hopping in your car and getting stuck in traffic, uh, particularly through the Moss Landing, you know, two lane highway, you could just hop on a train and be there. Um, no hunting for a parking space, no sitting in traffic, uh, really quite a comfortable way of getting around. Um, they also envision uh, intercity travel uh, from San Luis Obispo on up through Salinas and to Gilroy and San Jose. So uh, TAMC is ahead of us. Uh, but, but rail is even bigger than that. So uh, our county, Santa Cruz County, is part of the Coast Rail Coordinating Council, which is five counties between here and Santa Barbara. And the Coast Rail Coordinating Council is uh, studying co the Coast Rail Corridor right now. The San Luis Obispo Council of Governments is the lead agency in charge of that. And they're, they're looking at what uh, rail between Santa Barbara and Salinas would look like. And even bigger than that is the state rail plan. And uh, in 2018, Caltrans released the state rail plan. And uh, in a nutshell, uh, they envision transforming California into the Switzerland of North America by 2040. And the reason I say Switzerland is because Switzerland is where the pulsed rail system was developed. And basically, uh, when trains come into any particular station, they're met by buses and shuttles and other types of mobility devices. And so that the, the uh, rail comes into the station, it stops, everything comes in, sort of kisses it, and then they all leave together. It very efficient, minimizes transfer times and ease of transfer. Uh, the state rail plan also um, basically announced to the state of California that Caltrans is moving away from funding highway expansions and they're now funding railway expansions. In fact, last year there was a highway expansion program in Southern California that was defunded in favor of a railway expansion program. Um, the state rail plan is big. It envisions moving our mode share, the number of passenger trips made by rail from today, three tenths of 1% to almost 7% by 2040. Um, that basically means that you would have 92 million passenger miles every year by rail. No, I'm sorry, every day by rail. And that's a lot of traffic. In fact, just to give you some context to that, that is as many people as travel on Interstate 5 from the Mexican border to the um, Canadian border uh, every day times one and a half. That is how many people would be moving on the state rail network by 2040. So the state has a vision and we have a vision. And the Friends of the Rail and Trail uh, in collaboration with many other community groups has developed what we're calling Coast Connect. Coast Connect is a vision for transforming transportation in our county. The vision basically imagines uh, transformation of the existing rail corridor into the backbone of a robust countywide transportation system by 2030. It would maximize our mobility options, give us car-free travel options, make it easy to access throughout the county and serve as many people as possible. Basically transform the county. To further visualize that, we created this graphic and you can see on the sort of the bottom of the graphic, the uh, rail and trail spine uh, which extends from Davenport up in the north and uh, waves along the, the coast and connects into Watsonville. The trail is illustrated by the dashed line. The passenger rail service is the purple line that uh, runs from Santa Cruz to Watsonville. Um, at each rail station is sort of the dashed or dotted uh, blue uh, paper clip that sort of illustrates the the area of the county that would be fed by buses and shuttles. Um, and the green circles, uh, which are also uh, focused on mobilizing the personal mobility choices, such as bikes, e-bikes and scooters, um, safe routes to the train station. So, you know, protected bike lanes, uh, safe, safe uh, sidewalks. Um, all of those would be uh, as part of the entire vision. So why does this matter? It matters because people, people, the planet and prosperity. So we wanna want people to have options 
to pursue opportunities, to have better access to resources and jobs and a higher quality of life. For the planet, we want to provide an attractive alternative to car travel to help fight global warming, reduce air pollution, and reduce dependence on fossil fuels. And lastly, for prosperity, both businesses and people will thrive with a more reliable and efficient transportation system that allows car-free living and working. To give you some idea of the benefit to families, uh, this chart summarizes the percentage of uh, household income spent on transportation. Uh, this chart comes from the Unified Corridor Study, so it's pretty current. And you can see that for an auto-dependent household with an annual income of about $50,000, 35% of their income is spent on transportation. If they can just get rid of one of their cars and have one car and use public transit, the amount of their income spent on transportation drops to 23%. So going from two vehicles to one would save them about 12% of their $50,000 annual uh, income. That's about $6,000 a year or about $500 a month. $500 a month will go a long ways to paying rent and buying groceries. So we're in favor of uh, a more equitable transportation system. Lastly, we think of the rail and trail as a true legacy project. This is a game changer for the next generations of people who live and uh, work and play in Santa Cruz. This is a gift to the future. And that is basically my presentation for today. I hope you found it informative and that you learned something uh, about the Coast Connect vision and about what's happening with public transportation in our community. If you wanna learn more, I've included the web addresses for the coastconnect.org and railandtrail.org where you can find out more about the Coast Connect vision, more about the rail and trail. And if you're uh, inspired and you wanna take some action today, here's some ideas about uh, actions you could take. You can email the RTC, the Regional Transportation Commission at the email address there, and just tell them, I support rail transit on the rail corridor. And you can also go to the coastconnect.org web, uh, webpage and endorse the Coast Connect vision. And lastly, I'm always happy to answer questions. So if you have any questions or wanna talk about things or just want some more information, you can always just contact me directly. My contact information is at the bottom of that slide. So at this time, I'd be delighted to answer some questions or take some comments from uh, people who might be in the audience today. Thank you. Okay. It seems like that presentation must have been pretty darn good because we don't have any questions yet. I'll stay on for a few more minutes in case someone has a question. Uh, go ahead and, and uh, chat uh, and uh, you know, enter, enter any questions you might have in, in, the, in the chat box. Um, while I'm waiting for more questions, I just wanna thank uh, everybody who was part of this uh, presentation today. The Friends of the Rail and Trail is a, is a big team of all volunteers and you know, none of us works alone. So uh, we're grateful that um, there's a whole team of people that spend their time and energy promoting and educating and uh, advocating for the rail and trail. It's, it's a long haul, but this is a great project. And uh, we really look forward to a, a transformed transportation system, our county, that um, is, brings equity and uh, sustainability and prosperity. So thanks so much for everyone. Oh, I see some comments here. People are thanking me. And ah, uh, there's a comment here. They love that people can roll on and off and bring their bikes right onto the uh, passenger rail transit vehicles. Uh, another comment, good looking presentation, thank you. Uh, <laughs> like I said, you know, we work as a team so that I'll, I'll pass that thanks on to the entire team. Uh, here's a question. How do we get uh, more people on board with the vision? 
Uh, I think the best thing to do is to tell your friends. Um, invite them to go to the coastconnect.org uh, website and uh, sign up. We have a, an easy way, you know, just go there and sign up, give us your email address and your name and, uh, and we will reach out. We have a newsletter that we push out about one every two months, more or less, we're all volunteers. So it sometimes takes three months to get a newsletter out. Uh, but we also keep you posted with action alerts. So if something does come up that needs uh, some support, you know, the, the RTC is making a decision or the city of Santa Cruz is making a decision and it would be helpful for you to uh, let your representatives know. We'll typically send out a, an action alert so you can, you know, send in a note or uh, make a phone call or whatever. And, and I have to say, you know, um, Ford is, a, is an all volunteer organization and we rely 100% on the donations of people from the community. So if, if, you're, uh, if you share our vision, we invite you to, to join our email list and also to donate. You know, we, we, we need, uh, we, we spend every penny we get and we spend it wisely. It, it helps to, to have some cash. Um, oh, here's a question about the fence. So um, there's uh, some misinformation that's, uh, or some concerns that have been expressed by members of the community. Um, some um, people think that the fence that will separate the trail from the rail will be this giant cyclone fence, you know, a big ugly chain link fence. And um, I just wanted everyone to reassure everyone that the, the actual fence that will be in between the rail and the trail is a smooth wire fence. It's about 42 inches high, which is a little over waist high. Um, it's uh, the wires are about, I think they're about a foot apart. I don't remember exactly, um, but you can see, see right through it. And um, the great thing about this um, fence is that you can go see what it's going to look like. So the west side, I mentioned the west side trail is about to open. They've got much of the fencing is in place. So you can go see for yourself. It, uh, I don't think it's ugly. Uh, I think it's kind of the minimal fence needed to keep, keep pedestrians safe. And, um, and we need that. You know, we need a safe, tra uh, safe trail. We'll have children out there, uh, elderly people. Um, you know, so it's good to have uh, some separation and a, a low fence that you can see right through is pretty easy. Um, I'd say it's beautiful. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks again for joining me today. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, give me a call. Um, follow us on Facebook. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, we've got we're we're on all those social media channels. Um, and uh, stay tuned. Uh, there'll be another uh, Fridays with Fort uh, about a month or so from now. And uh, just so you know, the next topic up is this larger vision of uh, what's going on around us. So I'll, I'll bring some detailed information about um, what TAMSI is doing and the progress they're making, what uh, the Council of uh, Governments is doing downtown San Luis Obispo, where they're at in their rail trail plan, what the state's doing. I know they're uh, gonna update their plan. Um, and uh, so that's, that's what's happening. I see, oh, one more question. Uh, Tamsi, uh, people are asking when the transit agency of Monterey County would institute train service at the Pajaro station. Great question. Um, right now, the, uh, the kickstart project, which connects Salinas to Gilroy, is the, the project that is currently under construction. They're just now completing the station improvements in Salinas. Um, that commuter train will be commuter service. That commuter service will uh, could stop in Castroville and in Pajaro, uh, where it would connect with the Monterey Bay, uh, Monterey Branch Line in Castroville and with the Santa Cruz Branch Line in Watsonville and Pajaro. Um, both of those um, junctions would need stations, which are not currently funded. Um, but the train will probably be running right past uh, the Watsonville Junction, probably by 2024. Uh, they're negotiating right now with uh, different rails, rail carriers um, to see who will be the, the actual uh, contractor to provide that service. Um, and uh, so they hope to roll that out in 2024. But if, if that happens and there's the will to create a Pajaro station, stations go up quickly 
And so if that train starts running in 2024, we could have a train, we could have a, a, a station in 2024, right in Pajaro. So that would be the earliest it could happen. Uh, personally, I would love to see that. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks again for joining me today and uh, we'll be in touch. Stay tuned for more.